Okay, I just want to show you my Ega Charles again and the cultivation of it. So unfortunately, my Inoki um, Ega Charles has gotten contaminated with some kind of mold, which is the green thing here. And the problem was that I didn't seal the char correctly. So here at the side, I have a small gap where the parafilm didn't go over. Yeah, and also I think that the oyster uh, char is contaminated too. It seems as if there's some kind of slime mold uh, in the char, which is getting bigger. So I have to trash this one because it's really close to the culture. But it doesn't matter because I will soon have some oyster mushrooms in the basement and then I can take a new culture from those mushrooms. So in general the still airbox is working, but I think that, yeah, you still have a small rate of contamination. So in future I'm definitely going to make my cultures in a laminar flow hood. Okay, I also want to show you the oyster mushrooms, which have gotten quite a lot bigger. So that's nice. And there's a second uh, badge here, which is coming out of the bag. So I always make sure that I keep it as moist as possible. And now I have to harvest the rest of the shiitake mushroom. So as you can see, some of the mushrooms have gotten really big and now it's time to harvest them. And this time I'm going to harvest all of them. Doesn't matter if they are small or big. Okay, so I harvested another bunch of shiitake mushrooms. Really nice um, yield. And now I have to take out the uh, shiitake substrate because they need to rest and dry out for three weeks now and in three weeks i will start growing them again by watering them soaking them in water and then i can put them back into the growing chamber for the second yield okay guys so i want to modify my setup a little bit because i want to take back in the blue oyster mushrooms into the box but for that I need a much better airflow. So this is my current setup. So the main fan will push in air from the outside and then the air will go through the middle and the mushrooms will get fresh air. Uh, also from the other side the smaller fan is going to let in some air as well. So the fresh air is going to meet in the middle and then the old air is going to go out through the four holes at the side. And also I have directly aimed the pipe of the fogger at the oyster mushroom because the fogger is not only making fog but it's also going to push in some fresh air. Okay I have this lighter here and now I will show you how the air flows. Um, so here the flame is getting drawn to the fan and here the air is coming out of the box. It's so strong that even my lighter goes out. So my plan is that I'm now taking this FFP2 mask and I want to cover the fan so that it has less air intake. So maybe I should not have installed this big fan. Maybe I should have gone for a smaller fan like the other one at the other side. Okay, now we are close to 90% humidity, however, the fogger is set on the highest setting, which I don't like, because then it's using up so much water. I rather 
it only uses half of the water because otherwise I will have to come down every 12 hours and fill up the water again. Yeah, and I really like how uh, the system is working now. So the humidity is now much more stable inside of the box, which I like. And we pretty much now stand at 90% of humidity, which is great. Hello, my friends. Okay, it's about two days later again. And in the meantime, my oyster mushrooms have grown quite a lot, as you can see. But unfortunately, my lion's mane got a little bit yellow which is not good, I suppose. The next thing that I've bought is this here. This is my new CO2 um, measuring device. And I just wanted to see how much CO2 I have inside of this chamber because oysters, they really need a low CO2 environment. And yeah. We have 400 to 420 ppm inside of the box, which is really good and it's basically the same as outside. Okay, now it's time to upgrade my lab and the steel air box is fine, but I want to recreate a laminar flow hood out of the steel air box here. Okay, and now I want to build a wooden frame for this filter here, which I purchased on Amazon. It cost me like 20 euros and this is a HEPA filter. So it's filtering out everything from mold spores to bacteria, dust, viruses even. So yeah, that's a pretty good filter. So unfortunately the frame doesn't fit this way because I have some uh, feet here of the box but I can mount the frame like this it's no problem Okay, my friends, look at this. It's two days later again, and the oyster mushrooms have grown pretty big. Now, as you can see, the blue oysters have changed color to gray. So they are only blue when they are really young in the pinning stage, but when they start to grow, they look like this. And I'm really happy that my setup worked like this because it's really hard to uh, grow mushrooms inside of a box. But with this, new setup here with the fans it's getting enough of oxygen and this way we have a good harvest okay what a nice cluster of oyster mushrooms awesome all right so i left the smaller cluster on because here the mushrooms are so small and now I'm also going to cut a slit into the top here. This way we should get a second flush starting from, from here.
Nice. Okay, finally my laminar flow hood is done and as you can see by the flame we got some air traveling from the filter to here towards me. Uh, the flame could be bent stronger so the airflow could be better so I might get two more ventilators uh, on top of the other ones to make the air flows stronger but right now as you can see the flame is coming towards me so it should be okay okay now before we start I gotta say that only one of five agar jars did not contaminate so this is the one that um, survived it's the lion's mane so I don't have to clone this anymore then here's the raishi it was a fail unfortunately so I have some brown mold in there and yeah, it's pretty close to the, to the mycelium of the Raishi, so I'm gonna have to throw this one away. Now the Inoki mushroom also got contaminated with a green mold that came um, a little bit later. But the Inoki mushroom um, has grown really wide, so now I will try to open this up and cut out um, some mycelium, which is the farthest away from the green mold. And also I'm going to put it into my laminar flow hood like this so that the spores of the green mold are flying towards me and not onto uh, the white mycelium. Okay, now it's time to um, clone the enoki, which is contaminated. Let's do this. This time I want to give it two good wraps instead of only one. Alright, so next here I have a piece of reishi that I just cut off from my reishi culture. And now I'm going to dissect this and I will cut out one piece in the middle. Okay, I got one good piece. Okay, next I need to harvest the last oyster mushrooms that I have in here. And one thing is certain, you never want to eat oyster mushroom raw because it's poisonous. So you really want to cook it. Make sure that you always cook your oyster mushroom. Okay, here I got a piece of shiitake.
Okay, that's it. Okay, so finally I'm done. So now I have, I hopefully have cultures of enoki, reishi, blue oyster, and shiitake again. The lion's mane is looking really promising. And I'm gonna take these up to my office because down here in the basement it's too cold and then the mycelium graph is very slow. So yeah, I will keep you updated if my laminar flow hoods worked or not. And you will very soon see more videos of mushroom growing. Stay tuned till next time.